Hello, everyone. Come on in, grab a seat. Good to see everyone this afternoon. We're about to get started. Who's ready to be thrilled? Show of hands. Okay. Yes. Maybe they're already great. thrilled. We are so of course, so. it's been a thrilling day. Um, such a great event. I want to thank the NJBIA for inviting me to moderate this panel. I actually work quite a bit with the NJBIA in terms of turning some of their press releases into news stories. So it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Rhonda Schaffler. I am the business correspondent at NJTV. That is your PBS station here in New Jersey. We do a nightly business program uh, with Mary Alice Williams. And business is a component, uh, an important part of that program. So that is what I do. We're going to do this panel maybe a little bit differently. It's the afternoon. We just had a great lunch. Uh, we want this to be interactive. There's time at the end for questions, but I don't want anyone to wait to ask a question. So we're just going to have a little bit more of a free-for-all, perhaps. I'm going to have my panelists each introduce themselves. I know their names are there. They can tell them something fun you know, about themselves. And I want them to answer this question, and I will start first, and that is, <coughs> What do you like best about networking? What do you like least about it? So for me, what I like, what I actually love about networking is I love meeting people. You can drop me anywhere on the planet. I will talk to anyone. I just really find people intriguing. Um, and I'm, I, I don't know, I actually prefer to go to events completely by myself because it forces me to meet people. So that's what I love about it. Here's what I hate about it. I'm terrible with names, and I've always been, and I've tried all those little tricks. I'll remember where people live, their kids, what sports they watch, but I'm really bad with names. So that's something I always try to work on personally, which can tell you that even if you love networking, you can always improve uh, and do better. So we're just going to go right down the road with these lovely, thrilling ladies, and they're just going to tell, the, tell you a little bit about themselves. <coughs> And again, tell our group here what you love about networking and what you don't like so much. Go so ahead. good afternoon. How is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just ask for one thing? Yes. Can we have everybody stand up? And you can't sit by somebody that you know. You have to switch. <laughs> yes, this group here. Musical <laughs> 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 chair. Switch it up, ladies. If you know, if you know if you have to, you need to go to the your book, by the way. Do it. I see some people moving. Some if you're no. here with somebody you know, you're going to move over to a table where you don't know people. And that's Network 101. Good job. Everyone, most everyone is passing so far. So we've done some switching of the tables. Yes? A few of you? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. What you like best and what so you like So hi, best. my name is Christine D'Agostino. I work for the Carpenter Contractor Trust. No, we're not a bank. We are the marketing arm for union carpenters and contractors, and I'm the VP of operations. So what that entails is I do all the social networking along with Heather, but I also, as I call it, uh, go out. I am the voice, and I'm also the face for the carpenters and the contractors. Uh, everybody will say when they, go, you know, when they go to all these events, you love meeting new people. I do, but my, what I really love is different personalities. I love it when somebody will talk about something that I don't know nothing about or something that they're talking about that I, I just learned. I'm like, I find that fascinating. What I don't like is sometimes the long hours. You have a long day, then all of a sudden you're out, you don't come home until 10 or 11. So those are my likes and my dislikes. But mostly, I would say they're all mostly likes. <coughs> Go okay, ahead, so hi everyone, I'm Sally Glick. Thrilled to be here. I am the um, Chief Growth Strategist at Sobelco, a CPA firm in northern New Jersey, but serving uh, the entire state and certainly the region as needed. Uh, I think that it's probably self-selecting that we're all on this panel, because if I, I'm guessing that every single person, you, we, you should have not gone first, <laughs> is going to say that what they love the yes. most is meeting people, right? That's why you're in it in the first place. And much like you, I have often been told by my managing partner that I am not the chief growth strategist, not just a partner in the firm, but the ambassador. And that is my favorite role, and it is because I love representing the organization and the community, and yes, meeting new people, yes, meeting people that are exciting and dynamic, and smart. I love being with smart people. 
The challenge for me is there's never enough hours in the day not only to conduct the marketing you write long days, but also to follow up with all the people that I meet. I won't say I have great intentions because my great intentions do, I do follow up. It's part of the role, it's part of the point of the networking, but there's just not enough time to develop those wonderful friendships of, with the people that I meet that I know I'm letting slip away that would be just fabulous to get to know more deeply. So it's the transactional element drives me crazy. I'd love to be able to meet everyone with a little more depth. Nice. Hi, everybody. Can you all hear me? Okay, because I have two microphones like <laughs> surrounding me. No, no, it's, it's, like, good. A, it's like a newscast. <laughs> yes, yeah. right? Exactly. So what it's you like a 3D voice. So I'm Robin Lefkowitz, and I'm Executive Vice President, Director of Branch Administration and Business Development for Northfield Bank. And what that means is I run all the branches for the bank. Um, it was supposed to be a temporary thing when I got out of college, and I wound up <laughs> having a 33-year career in banking. So uh, I will tell you that networking is pretty much my life. Uh, the more you get to know me and hear me, you'll understand that. The thing I like most about it is I can help people. So I can genuinely tell them what they should be doing a little bit differently with their banking, and I like being a resource for people if they need any kind of assistance or help. Um, the thing I like least is going to be constantly standing because networking is really walking around a room. And um, even at a wedding, it's 24-7, you know, and it's just something that comes naturally after a lot of practice. But... Um, it's tiring on the feet. And this the is back. why it's great that flats are back in yes. style. Let's keep them yes. in style now. Yes, with little heels. Yeah, on that note, my name, <laughs> my name is Philomena Lapore Taylor. Uh, on the street, they call me Phil, much easier. Um, and I made the number one networking mistake of wearing really uncomfortable shoes to this conference, and I've been secretly <laughs> putting on my sneakers. <laughs> I'm wearing the nice shoes now. Um, I uh, am an immigration lawyer. I have about 15 years of experience, uh, mostly in Manhattan, in a very large corporate environment, and two years ago I decided to start my own practice in New Jersey. Uh, and right now, that's where I'm at. I'm growing and leading a small team and very much enjoying it. And networking is at the core of, um, you know, what I do and ensuring that I can keep the uh, law firm going. Uh, what do I love most about networking? I think, yes, we're all people person. Pe people people and I love to meet people I love to make meaningful connections with people um, but I would say my comfort zone is really like at the core of my favorite and my biggest dislike because exiting the comfort zone can be so um, rewarding um, so I love that about networking but at the same time it's tough and you just you know you have to constantly push yourself to um, to really connect with people so that's that's how I feel and last but not least, <laughs> I'm Ann Thornton from MSI Plumbing and Remodeling. It's a business I own in Hunterdon County. I have 25 employees, so I have six plumbers and 10 carpenter carpenters, and nothing ever gets done at my house, of course. That's how that goes. So my customers are all within 30 miles of what we do. So networking is, to me, it's not only meeting people in something like this, but it's also... I look at it as my company networking because we support so many events and nonprofits, and so it's not just me, but it's my company name out there too, right? That, that is a part of how I network. The best thing I like about networking, as much as I love to talk, and I do love to talk, I love to ask questions. So I always try to really, when I meet somebody new, to ask them questions because I'm like everybody else. I'm interested in who they are. Um, you know, I, I'll be standing in a line for a movie and, uh, you know, the person will be my next best friend, you know. Um, so I think being curious is something that I've always been and I think that really helps uh, because it comes across as authentic and, I'm, and I really am interested in hearing your answers. Um, the least thing I, I think I like about networking is when you kind of, you go in and you meet that person and, and they're just all about, well, I'm a financial planner and I'm, who's doing your finance? Yeah. What? Well, wait, you don't even know who I am. So I think that's the part I don't like the most is if somebody doesn't know how to do it on the other end. So that's why you're all here, <laughs> so that you don't ever make that mistake. And um, 
yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic way to grow your business and your career, and your really, it's for your whole life. So, mm -hmm. great, there thank we go. you. Yep. So, how many participated in speed networking this morning? Show of hands. Great, that was a warm up for what you're going to do now. So, I hope you liked it. <laughs> so, turn uh, at your table and get ready to chat. I'm going to give every table two minutes. Chat amongst yourselves, do a little networking, then we're going to talk about it afterwards. Go now. And we're in 100 and on you. I'm having a hot flush. It's warm, <laughs> it's warm in here. It is pretty warm. Um, so in uh, here. Clinton, Clinton area. Oh, yeah, we're in Yes, I know. Yeah, I know. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Do you know them? Yeah. Do you know the girls that are uh -huh. there? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Good. Um, that. What, which band? What, what, what bank did you guys buy? Yeah, it's Jim's. I'm good. I'm friends with Jim. Oh, okay. And you saw him a couple weeks ago down the shore. I love the noise level. Yes, he's totally there. I saw you guys in the women's breakfast. Yes, he's Yes, he's totally there. 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 Yes, he's totally there.
And always, um, always make sure you have lots of business cards. Lots of business cards. I you just want to go straight. Up? Sure. I, I think um, because what we're really doing is talking about we're using the word networking, but we really synonymous with that is building relationships. Yeah. So I agree. I try to be very strategic about where I am so that I know it's a place where I can add and get value, that the people I'm going to meet can build into relationships. And what I try really hard to do when I'm in a room, particularly if I hardly know anyone, is either introduce myself and find someone and then say, oh, I'd love you to meet. Did you get the chance to know? And so you kind of take over that hostess role, like it's your home. And you make a connection. You say, oh, well, you're in construction. And I have a friend who's a, con a lawyer who works with contractors. And suddenly you have made that give and take so much easier. And you've made it easier for someone else to network, which brings you joy if you're a people person, it also smooths the way and you've taken that kind of leadership ownership role Absolutely. and so it takes all, <clears throat> for me, but for most everyone also, it takes the pain out of being in a situation where you don't know anyone because you're responsible for introducing people to each other. Yes. So um, I, I try to uh, know who I'd like to meet if possible, so if you go with a purpose as I know was you know just mentioned, but if there's a business that you're looking to go after, then I would make it a goal to meet with those particular business people. Um, you can ask somebody to introduce you. Go over to a friendly face and ask them to you know do they know this individual? Perhaps they can help you. Um, and if you're possibly uncomfortable. Bring somebody with you, but make an agreement that you're going to split up so that afterwards you guys can talk about it and share who you met and like kind of like debrief. And it's okay every once in a while as you're passing like the buffet to say hi to somebody yeah. who's your friend. How's it going? It kind of eggs you on a little bit in a, in a positive light uh, and it, it, it keeps you going and you know, look at each other's business cards and say, Ooh, I want to meet that person. Oh, let me take you to, to meet them. So, so you know, because time is limited, uh, we do have to be pretty selective about where we're going to network. And the number one consideration for me is always, do I think I can make a meaningful connection with someone here? And it's not simply about getting a new client. I mean, obviously, yes, but it's not purely transactional or purely a sales pitch, I like to select venues that um, I'm interested in, genuinely, you know? And so, for example, the Women's Forum, I am genuinely interested in connecting with other women because I feel that we do network in the same way and we have that, you know, that ability to connect with one another because we might be more likely to have common interests or a common life story. Um, you know, and so I, I tend to look for places where I have a personal interest. So I'm also, for example, really into food and wine, you know, and so I've done a lot of networking in that industry because I have a good time. And so it, it's a useful way to use my time and to do my job at the same time. Um, and so I do think having fun is central to my um, <laughs> my calculation. Um, again, I think a very good tip is always knowing who is going to be there uh, before you go. Uh, looking at the list of attendees, looking at the, um, the organization itself, who is a member in this organization, um, is it really going to be a, a place that I think I can ultimately achieve my goal of growing my business. Okay, I'm just going to ditto all they said. <laughs> Seriously, but I, I will add um, kind of a, a story for today. There were there was someone here that I really wanted to meet, and I let that be known to several people running this whole day that you know I've, I've met over the years through this event networking, because it was important to me. I wanted to meet. I was like stalking this woman, and. <laughs> So I had three or four people out there stalking for me. So what happened? What do you think happened? Yeah, I met her. And yeah, I got that appointment. So to me, that was a networking strategy. It wasn't just, you know, I'm, I'm, we're going to be friends later after we sit down, you know, over wine and food. <laughs> but, it, you know, I came here with a purpose. As much as I do want to know you and, and am true, you know, really, really want to hear your story, et cetera, when you're on the clock, so to speak, I'm trying to be efficient about it, right? Um, so I do go in everywhere I go with the mindset of, 
okay, and then what can I bring to it? You know, you, you don't know what you can bring unless you talk to the people around you and get to know who they are and what they do. So I kind of call it super networking, where it's, it takes it to the next level, where you have people networking for you because they know I'm looking for this. So you have to put it out there, what you're looking for. By a show of hands, you can raise your hand more than once. How many of you view networking to grow your business or get a client? <laughs> How many look at networking to advance your career or move into a different career? How many look at networking as a way just to perhaps make a friend? Great. It's interesting how there are many purposes. I want to throw yeah. this out there. We had um, from this table here. Um, let's say you're at an event like this, and you want to network, and you want to meet people. And let's say I want to get into the plumbing business. So I need to present myself as somebody who is looking for a pretty different career change. What tips can you share, ladies, for somebody who wants to transition and, and really make a sharp turn, how can networking help them? Go Since I'm the one that owns yes. the plumbing company. <laughs> we'll start on that end. Yeah, we'll start on this end. <laughs> you know, the thing that in, impresses me most about when people come to, to talk to me, whether it's about plumbing or how to get business, whatever, how to grow a business, I want to see excitement. I want to hear you say to me, oh my God, you're Ann Thornton, you own a plumbing room. I want to be a plumber, or you do all this great social media. I want to do what you do. How do you do that? I want somebody to be excited with that, right? And here's my other thing about that. I can't tell you how many people I meet who will say to me, and, and I, I will say to them, please call me, here's my card. I'll sit down with anyone, any questions. And I'm telling you, 99% of those people they don't call me. That's why they're not sitting up here. So, you know, I'm serious, right? Am I serious? You're right. I can't tell you how many people I, I think, oh, this one's going to call me. Sometimes I'll sit their business card right here. And they never call me. Like, Are you in the drawer? Because you must not really mean it. So my point would be, be excited. Make people think that, know that you, you want this information. So Let, let's go down the row, <laughs> row, actually. What is the best way to follow up? How do you, you know, walk that line so you're not nagging someone, um, and everyone's busy, but you want to reach out. Let's, let's share some ideas for following up effectively. Yeah. And go ahead, uh, Philomena. Okay. Yeah, sure. go ahead. Um, yeah, I think that just the standard, it was nice to meet you email is kind of a waste of time. Um, you know, you could just gather about 50 business cards and sit at your desk for two hours and send emails to every single person and most likely you won't hear back from any of those people or maybe one or two but i think you know while you're networking you do have to kind of multitask and think about how can i see this person again you know how can i maybe maybe there's there's a, a connection geographically maybe we could meet at another event um, maybe we know someone in common. Maybe they expressed, a, you know, an interest in my services, or maybe I am interested in their services. So I, I try to reach out to someone with a plan in mind and try to see them again. And even if it means emailing three people or calling three people after, if that is meaningful and leads to something where then you meet another three people and then you meet another three people, it's just a better use of my time and it's more effective. So, you know, already I've spoken to some people at this conference where I know afterward I will be seeing them again. You know, for example, there's a, an award ceremony that I just learned about honoring immigrant entrepreneurs. I'm going to be going to that thanks to uh, a woman who I met here. Yeah. So it's, it's great. Anyone else on the panel want to add? Sure. sure. Go ahead. Yep. Um, I, I try to make it a point to not commit to everybody that I meet. And I'm sure they're thankful of that. <laughs> yeah. um, and I tell my staff the same thing, that try to get two meaningful like appointments. And, and by appointments, I don't necessarily mean like, you know, the way you view an appointment. Um, you're not selling a service, you're selling yourself. Mm -hmm. So the hope is to be able to meet these people over coffee. And that's how I feel is where I wanna meet you next. So if we hit it off, 
and if I can help you in some way, um, then why don't we, let's connect, you know, next week. I'll call you and we can meet for coffee or breakfast or lunch, depending on how well we hit it off, depending on how interested we were in each other. Because it has to be a mutually beneficial relationship, otherwise, you're a stalker and you're yeah. annoying. I think, I think yeah. She, yeah. Robin just made a really good point is to not leave the conversation or the interaction without saying, yeah, I'd really like to get together right. with right. you for coffee so that if you do send the email or you make the phone call, right. at least you've planted that seed. I think that's a really good, so, really good sure. thing to say. And sometimes you're looking at, at the, each other's calendars. Yeah, yeah. Like sure. Because exactly. like, <laughs> it's just, it makes sense. Right. And it mm -hmm. might not be you're going to do business. You know, not everybody who I meet do I do business today with. Absolutely. It's how can we help each other? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what women do really well. Mm -hmm. I think women help each other. I think that growing your business, and maybe this is a, a negative that we do, um, we're not necessarily looking to grow our business right out of the, the gate. It's how can we connect? How can we positively connect? Can I help you in any way? Let's have coffee. Let's see how we can grow this relationship because you do business with your friends. That's how women do business, I feel. So that's my tactic. So I, I do it a different way. I do like just, almost like a tagline for somebody. I'll so they'll remember you. So when they, when you email them, they're like, oh, now I remember who Christine is. Yeah. Yes. Or you what's say the something. Tagline? Or the, it depends on the person. OK, what's you know my what I mean? tagline? So we just be, met. Yeah, we yeah. just met, you know, and I can say, oh, it's lovely meeting uh, the speaker. Do you remember the NJBIA? And then, I'll, and then from there, I just start talking, or I can say, remember, I was the first one, the left side, remember the left side, remember the left side. Okay. So people will remember, but also, you know, just, it's a, it's, you're having a conversation. It's like meeting somebody new at school when you first started. So basically, you have to open yourself up to them a little bit, just so they will remember you. There's always that one little thing somebody will remember about you. And then you kind of reiterate right back to them when you write to them or you call them. So they'll be like, oh, she actually remembered that, you know, I just bought you no know, shoes for $200. Or she just remembered <laughs> that, you know, oh my goodness, my boiler just exploded. Like, you know what I mean? Stuff like yeah. that. So, it, you're leaving almost an impression so they remember who you are. Well, it's personal. Absolutely. A, I was just going to comment in yes, the middle. There's a great book called Give and Take by Adam Grant, and it's never about business. You get business because you're giving, because you're caring, because right. you're heart-centered, because it isn't coming across as if you're looking for a lead. You're trying to build a friendship. I moved here 17 years ago. And I'm from Chicago, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> and the interesting thing about my career was I didn't know anyone except the firm recruiting me. And so every friend I have here that has grown after 17 years came initially from a business connection. Everyone I know, it's the only way they, my mm -hmm. children are grown, I don't have school, I don't have Little League, I had no other way to meet people except through my company, my firm. And so it, when you look at people and anticipate a friendship, not uh, cha-ching, maybe this person needs our services, everything becomes different. And, yes. and that give and take um, study that he did show that there are three kinds of people, givers, takers, and matchers. Some people give, some people take, and some people sort of, I'll give you, but what are you giving me? And over time, as you might suspect, um, it's the givers who always get more. In the short run, takers get more because they are there for the taking. But over the course of time, givers who give freely and genuinely, authentically, because they want to, because they want to build those connections for you, for you to succeed, and in the process you become friends, and then ultimately everyone succeeds. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's such a great point in terms of giving, because the, um, the giving of your time, you know, that's a very special thing to give someone. And if you're going to network, you have to be really willing to give that. And the follow through is so essential. If you're just going to go and say, I attended this conference and that's that, that's just not going to cut it. You're not going to get anything out of that personally because it is personal. Um, and, you know, it's just probably not worth the time to begin with. It's having that idea that you're willing to give of your time and follow through with it. I think that's so, really important. Well, talking Go about, ahead. I'm sorry, giving of your time, Yeah. you know, it popped into my head. So I'm sure, and, and we don't know this about each other because we don't really know each other very well at this oh, but moment. We but, but we will. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but I'm going to bet that everybody here is involved in not-for-profit organizations as well, and they give of their time being on boards, being on committees, and fundraising because that's part of the giving of the time and making the connections and finding something special that you could then share 
uh, your time, your, your money, um, your company, and, and that is part of the networking as well. Point. It's a great it's point. A great point. I want to actually uh, navigate into what I would call not fun networking or forced networking, mm -hmm. and you might yes. also call it trying to get sales. I'll use the example of a friend of mine in a sales business. So she's told to network. What that might mean is having to go to the bar with a bunch of guys or go and watch a basketball game with a bunch of guys, because she's one of the few women. Um, she doesn't really like basketball. She doesn't really want to be in a bar till midnight, but it's kind of expected um, in her position. Her, her bosses lay that out for her. So what happens when we're in um, forced networking situations, if you will, or you're not completely in control, you have to make the best of it, um, and perhaps this is not the way you would prefer to network. And also, it's not a nice, friendly group um, of like-minded women and some very smart men. So how, how, does, how do you navigate kind of these more uncomfortable situations that you might be, find yourself in? The first thing is you can change jobs. Yeah. I, I guess, uh, you should be networking for a new yes, job. I, yeah. I, have, I have found in t over time yeah. that the more you try to sell, the less you sell. Mm -hmm. When you come out, even if someone asks you to present yeah, here, and I was sure. busy putting out brochures and saying, oh, well, here's what we do at our firm, or here's what we do at yeah. it would never work. You're not interested. Right. You're interested. It, it, it has to turn you off because you're trying to build a meaningful relationship, whether you're cultivating a donor at a nonprofit or trying to engage a volunteer, whether you're trying to build clients or mm -hmm. help someone internally uh, navigate through your own company by building an internal network. It, it ju to me, I'm not, I've never been in sales, but I can't imagine that just walking around saying, give me your business card, I'd like to follow up, I do financial planning, could ever possibly work in a meaningful way. Now, if you're in that kind of a business and you make cold calls and you get lucky because it's a numbers game and someone says, sure, I'll meet with you, that's fabulous. But the only thing you can do in those situations that you don't want to be in where they're being forced to make a sale or you're paying on a commission, is just to sort of make the best of it and say, you know, I love being here. I'm not that big a sports fan, but who do you use for your accounting? I'm just curious, you know? And almost make light of it, make a joke of it, and see if you can get a conversation started. <clears throat> almost everyone either loves sports, has a dog, needs a, a teenage daughter, needs a plumber, or something, <laughs> yeah. where you can find a common ground to have a conversation with. At least you can enjoy some of that evening. But That's I don't a think a force. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to, to address find, the... Trying to find common ground. Yeah, yeah. common ground. I'd like to address the male-female portion of this woman being asked to, no matter where you are, I mean, I, you can imagine I find myself uh, surrounded by men a lot in my business, and for me, I always just try to be the strongest and smartest person in the room and stand right up to them and shake their hand and act as equal as I can be, even if they're, you know, they own a much bigger company or whatever it is. Um, I, I don't shy away. I put myself there, and it's hard to do sometimes. And it was certainly hard to do when I, you know, was younger and coming up in the business. But <clears throat> you want, for me, I want to wreak power. I want these guys to look at me like, oh, wow, she runs a multi-million dollar operation. I can trust her. I, she knows her business. So don't, my advice is don't shy away when you're networking with men that you just stand right up there and you, you talk to them just like you'd be talking to your brother or somebody else. Um, you give everybody the respect they deserve, of course. But um, I think it's important to, uh, to feel powerful. And sometimes you just fake it till you make it because you don't, you're scared. I know, I've been there many times. And, um, but you have to. If you want to grow, and be someone of substance and be able to make changes in the world through the things that we love, like the nonprofits, et cetera, then you need to meet up with these people because they, you know, they have a lot of the money. So you have to meet up with these people. Yeah, How do you guys feel about that, yeah, networking I, I totally with men? Agree. I, yeah, so I work with 90%, and I have people here like I'm actually mostly men, carpenters and contractors. And it's very hard sometimes, yes, you walk in a room, but as everyone, you know, some people might know, I make the best of it. I will, my personality will just shine and I'll go right up to them just like you said, yeah. I shake their hands. I might know nothing about building a, a, a building or building a house or, you know, putting down the planks down there. I have no idea, but there is a common ground. You find that one word that you can relate to somebody, that's where the conversation gets started. Or the next thing that I always works for me, I make them laugh. Once you make them laugh, you can say whatever you want. You are, they're like, oh, this is great. She's laughing at my jokes. You might not like it, 
But guess what? You got their attention <laughs> and you're being human. You're just trying to interact. And a lot of people might shy away from that because I'm not shy, but I will let you know that I love to meet new people, yes. But there are moments where you're like, okay, did I go too far? Did I not say enough? Or why aren't they laughing at my jokes, you know? And you know what? You just brush it off. You just go on and, mm -hmm. and you just move along. And then, and then they'll, they'll respect you for that too because you're trying to join in their little, you know, into a little group of friends over here. Do you know what I mean? So you have to kind of like push your way into it somehow. And everybody has a different way of pushing into a certain crowd and talking to people. Use that. Find out what's your little niche that, oh, it worked this time. Oh, let me try it this time again. And keep repeating, repeating. If it doesn't work, try something else. But you'll get there. It's, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight sometimes. For some of us, it does. But for a lot of us, I know that it might take a while because you're like, I'm not going to go talk to that person. Or why do I have to sit over here? I'm sitting by myself. It's like, you know, you're, you're an eighth grade school dancer. All the boys are here and all the girls are here. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, there's only one little couple dancing there. So you have to kind of get everybody involved. So. And I think one of the points you're making, I just want to under, underline and underscore it because I'm not sure everyone's seeing it the same way, is that everyone's in the same position. At some point, everyone walks into a room where they don't see anyone they know. Or someone ends up standing by themselves, perhaps by the wine, uh, by the bar. <laughs> They're going to be the wine lady. Get out of my I way. have a wine story. <laughs> That's funny. Exactly. Yeah. But it, <laughs> you, know, you always, we about. always, I think people tend to think it's only them. I'm the only one that isn't yeah, engaged absolutely. in a conversation. I'm the only one that feels uncomfortable. I'm the only one that doesn't know anyone in this room. And it's about people. It's certainly, even if you're there in a professional role, which we would be, you're there as human beings, people, which you said. And so it's so important to remember that it's, very possible that the person standing next to you is equally or even more uncomfortable than you are. So again, when I go back to being the hostess, when you make someone else comfortable, it goes a long way toward making you comfortable. But everyone else is in that same boat. Nobody walks in and goes, ah, a room of 500 people, I don't know a soul. I can't wait. <laughs> I, I do that, okay, actually. Wait, I sorry, love sorry. that. We all like people. We, <laughs> all like, we all like people. We all like meeting new people. But it's a lot more comfortable. And I go and I go, Monica, I know Monica. I'm going to go say hi to her first and then drift around to someone else. No, oh, I bumped into Casey. That's great. So it's rewarding to see faces that are familiar, someone's nodding or smiling at you, as opposed to a room full of people that you have no clue who they are. But just remember, everyone else is probably in the same boat. Yeah, I think being nice and making others feel comfortable is, you know, goes across both genders. Um, mm. So, <laughs> related to the wine, um, <laughs> I, it should I, always come back to wine. I, I believe it's absolutely essential to learn trend. how to connect with everyone, including men. Okay, um, in a networking capacity, um, and. Um, Early on in my career as a lawyer in a very corporate environment in New York City, I was also asked to do these networking types of engagements, which, you know, I had no interest in whatsoever. And I was very inexperienced at that point. I was not even really sure of, like, what I was offering services-wise because, you know, I wasn't a seasoned practitioner, but I just went in and tried to pass around my business cards and talk to people. And it really, you know, wasn't effective in any way, shape, or form. And so, un completely unrelated to this, you know, ineffectual networking experience, I decided to become certified in wine and pursue, you know, advanced, oh, advanced oh, certificates. She's really a wine person. A, <laughs> I yeah, I have, I have all my these. My new best friend. I have certificates <laughs> in wine. I want that certification. So, so that, you know, in parallel, I'm becoming more and more experienced mm -hmm. as a lawyer, um, doing more networking, and I started to realize that, well, like really rich, you know, male partners at law firms like to drink fancy wine. And so this started to become a conversation starter for me. Um, Aren't it, you smart? I didn't do it. Oh. It was really unintentionally. But the lesson oh, yeah. is finding lesson common ground mm -hmm. and ways to connect <laughs> that are genuine. You right. know, I mean, yeah. so I was genuinely interested in having that conversation. It so right. serendipitously worked out. But it's so essential. And I think earlier in your career to, to be able to connect with everyone um, because let's face it, if people like you, they're going to promote you, um, et cetera. They're going to hire you. Um, uh, so being able to make these connections is important. I think as you become more senior, I, at least for myself, am more selective. And you know, I wouldn't even contemplate going to a bar and watching basketball um, because I would rather get involved in that charity or that right. nonprofit mm -hmm. and do something that I care about. 
Um, but when you're forced to go into situations where your boss is telling you to do it, you've got to find ways to make connections. I also think it's interesting, too. I mean, I work with people who know I like to go out, and they'll say to me, I don't know how to do this, or I'm afraid, and I'll make introductions. And I started off by saying what I'm horrible at is remembering names. Yeah. I will meet people a, a, a second time, and I'll say, I'm so sorry. I don't remember your name. I am terrible with that. And I admit kind of my own shortcomings, which I think also helps if you tell somebody I'm a little uncomfortable or I don't know anyone here. Um, chances are you'll find these people, you know, somebody like this, and they'll say, no problem, let me introduce you to my associate or my friend. So I think it's okay to, to be bold and powerful, but also to sometimes admit. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm a little that uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. So wait, it's I just thank God, thank God for name tags. Yeah. yeah, that's true. But not every <laughs> event you go to has a name tag. Yeah, I've true. been there. And, yeah. But I wanted to get back to the friend that doesn't know. My sales friend? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine being effective, being forced to do something you don't feel comfortable doing. So I kind of like Sally's idea about having to find another job because, <laughs> you know, if you're told to sell, and put it in an uncomfortable situation, you're not gonna be really earnest. Like people have to like you to do business with you. Absolutely. I will give her this yeah. advice. <laughs> but actually you had some really good advice about yes. always finding common ground. Because there really is a way to always find common ground. And it's... As long as you're willing to do that. And you're right, like dogs and wine and yeah. eventually right. you get to know how to baseball, keep basketball. score on baseball and basketball and football. But beer. Um, I also, I'm sorry, I was going to say, I don't admit that I don't know people's names, though. I, I, I apologize <laughs> for that, but, you know, I, I'm impressed oh, with your honesty in that. Do you know, that. sometimes, though, obviously I it's a little bad. different um, on TV, so sometimes people know me and I don't right. know them. Right. But um, I feel like I, I do that. I mean, I just, I don't want to start two minutes into a conversation and then somebody will say they're going to follow up with me and I don't know who I was speaking with, so... I have, I, I just tend to always do that. I'll say, could you give me your card again? Like, oh, I will yeah. ask for that because one. I can't call you if I don't have your number. True. So it's just easier if you give me your card again. And my husband, this is really it's bad and I apologize. So this is like, if he comes with me to something, if I don't introduce him, I don't know their name. So I say to him, could you introduce yourself, do that hoping too. that yes. they'll yes. introduce I do themselves that too. back? Yeah, that's a good but one. sometimes he's uh -huh. angry at me and he'll say, my wife is being so rude. She hasn't introduced <laughs> me to you. Either. And I just look at him you know, and go, like, uh, dagger. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but I uh, try not to admit when I don't. But in that case, I'd have to say I apologize. I don't remember your name. So, so we have discussed. I want to jump to something real quick, and then we can circle back. Because um, we kind of touched on it here, but we, we all talked on the phone before our uh, panel together. And we talked about super connecting. And I want to make sure we really delve into that term. Has anybody heard of super connecting? It's definitely on Google. Yes. OK. So this is, uh, I don't know who wants to kick it off. And if you want to kick it off, we can go on down. Um, because it's uh, an interesting way. There are other ways to network. And since that's a term that not everyone's familiar with, let's Yeah. No, I mean, it. I think it's just, like I said before, it's kicking it up another level. So that you have so much information out there about yourself that you go to, the, you know, can't just do a one-off event. Oh, I'm going to go to the NJBIA mm -hmm. this year. I'm going to make all these connections. OK, it doesn't work like that. You have to come back every year. You have to go to the meetings throughout the year that are that's offered, right? Because, and, and for me personally, when I met Michelle five years ago after the first event um, and, and told her what I was trying to do in my business and the things I was trying to accomplish, she then set it in motion every time, you know, she would make a connection for me. And then that person. So the point is, it's not just between you and me and you and me, but if you know what I'm trying to do because I put it out there or I've been a speaker on a panel or something, then maybe you're going to go, oh, yeah, that woman that was a plumbing company, she's trying to do that. So you, you just, you have to put it out there. You have to own it and put <laughs> it out there and tell people what you want. It's like you're... You know, your significant other, can you read their minds? Do you know? You're like, yeah. no, you have to tell me. So for me, super connecting is that putting what I want out there. I've been dying to meet Sally Glick forever because well, I hear so much I about am. her, <laughs> and here she is. I'm not kidding. You know, and I was so excited to get to meet you today because I have heard so much about you from people that know you and et cetera. So super connecting for me is just making sure 
everybody at different levels know who you are and what you're about and what you're looking for because they'll make a connection for you. It's like the Tom Sawyer hook fin thing, right? You tell them and they paint the fence. So that's what super connecting is. Um, I, I actually have never heard the term super connecting before we got together to prepare for this panel, but I think that um, related to, you know, just kind of letting as many people know as possible what you do and just putting it out into the universe. I also think it has to do with connecting others yes. um, together. Absolutely. So, you know, notwithstanding your own uh, business or your own goals, it's just actually genuinely making connections between other people and thinking, oh, you know, I, I think they would get a lot out of meeting each other. And so when, you know, you keep putting, giving that and giving that and eventually Come back. It's a mindset. It's, it's a, a mindset, take. right? It's exactly what Sally said before yeah. about giving. Yeah. And um, keeping in mind, I hate to say this, but you have to do this several times a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you can't just go to an event, and, and Ann just touched on that. You yeah. can't just say, okay, I'll come back next year. Um, you know, there could be weeks where I'm out six or seven nights a week. Not as much now, more so in my earlier career, but I would say I'm out at least three times a week. And, um, you know, you need to meet people, you recognize faces, you, you make that connection, you go to breakfast, you go to lunches, you go to breakfast meetings, you go to lunch meetings, you go to dinners, you go to cocktail parties. When you're at a wedding, you're not just there because you're friends with the bride and groom or their children. You're there because you're sitting at a table with people you possibly don't know, and it's a good way to connect. And again, you're not selling, you're just letting them know what you do, maybe passing a business card, asking for theirs, and then connecting with them later. Um, you know, I'll tell you a funny story. We had gone to, friends of ours have a house in Pennsylvania. We went for the weekend, and they had some of their friends from Pennsylvania, you know, who are also from New Jersey, come for like a little dinner party. And I was talking to one of the women. Uh, she is the registered nurse for a plastic surgeon um, in Union County. And uh, her husband is a politician. And so these were people that you are at something completely social and off you know, the record, like you're in your jeans and you know, dressed down, and you're actually making connections for work. And then they're offering to introduce you to other people. So that's really about super connecting. Exactly. And I also think one little small nuance and that is in the definition anyway, because I had never heard of it either. I never did it There's either. such a big difference. Well, maybe big isn't the right word, but there's such a difference between super networking and super connecting. So in your networking, obviously, what we expect that to be is some opportunities for us to meet people that have a relevancy for us and we would have a relevancy for them. The idea of the super connecting, as you said, Anne, is connecting people to each other that may have absolutely nothing to do with you absolutely. or your own personal gain. And that's why it's so powerful. I am, have the good fortune, and now I can, my network is bigger. But <laughs> the beauty of, of knowing the people I know is that I can be useful. I'm an only child. So yes, first I said, too. can you tell I'm from Chicago? You can tell that. Mm -hmm. You can probably tell I'm an only child, too, because I don't have sisters. I don't have brothers. And so I, I crave those meaningful friendships. And I know that if I have somebody that you really yeah, need to exactly. know, and I can introduce you, I don't gain. You're not doing anything for me personally or professionally, but I gain personally because I have made this nice interaction occur and it feels good to me to be able to do that and I think that's what super connecting is versus super networking is connecting other people and it's it's wonderful when you can do that because it's so personally rewarding mm -hmm. to know you might call me and say oh my god I met that person you told me to mm -hmm. meet I'm sitting on her board now this is just great I love I'm that so happy. it yes. makes yes. you feel mm -hmm. so good and I have board chairs who will call me and say, we're looking for a board member, or we'll have someone right. call and say, I'm in transition, I'm moving from for-profit to non-profit, I've heard that you're engaged in that community, could you help me? I'm not an executive search firm, but I'm glad <laughs> to help. You know, and so I think that that's the point, and that spills over, that whole attitude, philosophy, culture, spills over to the way you live your life, Absolutely. and ultimately mm -hmm. it comes back to you professionally as well. I just want to say that we have about 10 minutes left, so we want to make sure we get questions in. Um, please raise your hand. Anything goes, you're first. And there's a microphone coming around. Don't forget, it's networking. <laughs> Hi. 
I'm, I'm Michelle Fine, and I've had the pleasure of knowing Sally for a long time. I don't know how many years, and she is a master super connector, et cetera. I'm just curious about the practical nature of the follow-up. So we come away from an event like this. We have a stack of business cards. Someone at my table who was a coach said, write down as soon as you get a card who they are, what they were wearing, or something so that you'll remember it. Yeah. I struggle with, then what do I do? Because I'm at a big bank, I'm at JP Morgan, so I can't, there's certain things I can't do. So what do we do? Do you have any tips to first organize our connections and then the follow-up? So, can I? Mm -hmm, please. So basically, I do three piles. The first pile is somebody that I will remember just because of either something they wore, I'm very visual, what they wore, what they said, and what, and where they work. Okay, so that's one pile where I will remember. The second pile is like what you just said, that you know somebody just asked me, oh, write, write it down, because if I ever need a carpenter or a contractor, I'm gonna be calling you. Great, so I'll remember you, and that's the second pile. The third pile that people are like, I can help, like you said, we're reconnecting. They connected to me, but then I'm throwing them, I'm, I'm going to give them to somebody else. So it's a, I have three different piles, and you can do that right away. As soon as you meet, you can write one, two, and three. It just, it's so simple, and on the back of it, you'll know, oh, the one, that's the one I'm going to call right away. Two, it's kind of, okay, and three, it's like, I'll get to them when I, or, or they'll be in my reconnect file. So you can have all different <clears throat> systems. I know everyone's busy, but that's a simple thing. One, two, three, that's all it is. And then that will make your life a whole lot easier. And also just remember by certain things, you know, you know I'll remember you because, you know, I'm going back to the shoes again. So I'll remember you, you are patent leather, you know, green shoes, or you wore that necklace, or, you know, uh, you just said you came back from, you know, um, ba you know, the Bahamas. So I'll remember you. So it's more of a connection that way. Um, but like I said, I use the one, two, three system, and it works. And, you, and do it within, it's a 20-minute rule. If you don't remember them in 20 minutes, that's a totally different file. So <laughs> just try to, try to remember a them the next it's, a it's, like, it's like one of those, like, oh, okay. Um, okay, I'll put them on my mailing list. Yeah. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? So, yeah. But you, you know, you just said that, but yeah. yes. uh, that's mailing what I do. I, I, I put you on my mailing list. list. Mailing list. Yes. I look for tip. you on social media yeah. so that I can con you know, connect with you on Facebook and LinkedIn uh -huh. because at my company, I do something every Monday called Maintenance Mondays. <laughs> yeah. And it, it tells you a little bit about things to do in your house. I own a plumbing and remodeling company, and home maintenance company. So to me, that's really important. I may not see Absolutely, you again, yeah. but you're going to hear about MSI Absolutely, plumbing and remodeling because yeah. I'm going to find you <laughs> on social media and I'm going to friend you or do whatever they call the verb you to use to, <laughs> for every platform. I don't know, but I'm going to find you. And then you're going to get information and that way, then the next time you see me, even though yeah, I didn't reach out, you go, oh, yeah, you know, thank you for sending me whatever it is. But so I think it's not just a business card, right? It's, it's all these other avenues to find people yeah. and share what you do, share what you love. Sometimes but, also you get a sense, not just the, the one, two, three pile is brilliant, yeah. but it's also priorities. So sometimes you meet someone and immediately upon talking, just a few minutes, you realize this is someone I'd really like yes. to know more about. And right. you ask, may I, you know, I would love to get together with you. What makes sense? Do you mind if we have coffee yeah. or may I call you tomorrow and you take the call or whatever it is. But when you have that stack that's this big, you know yourself yeah. that you're yeah. going to pull out about four that really right. matter. So if you try to make yourself crazy by following up with 25, you can't. They can go on a mailing list. But if you have those four or five that really matter, I always find that not only um, can I get together with you, but that it, perhaps there's an event I know about and I say, you should know about this. Someone That's came by idea. our booth today and we were talking about mentoring. And I said, oh my God, I just got something from NJ.com. They're having first ever um, Monday mentoring. It's in November, I think. And I said, let me forward the flyer to you. And she's like, oh, I want to be a mentor. So I, filed, I forwarded that flyer. Right now she has my email. She has important information she wanted. And I was able to help someone who's looking for mentors to fill out their program. Mm. So if you can find things at the common ground mm. where you immediately make that impact by sharing something. Put a one. If there are one. I want to get back to questions. We're going to run out of time. There's Sorry. somebody Sorry. over here. I, yes. Microphone coming. <laughs> No worries. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marielle Giletto. I'm an attorney in that Park McKay. Um, so I hear a lot about connecting and making that common ground and building the relationships through networking, but then how do you translate that into actual business, right? Because you have your personal self, your wine self. I love wine. You and I can talk afterwards. But then how does that translate into I need a corporate attorney, right? Um, What's that next step? So it's, it's really done as a relationship. That's how I do it. 
So like I had said, you know, we might connect and I'll say you want to meet for coffee or breakfast or lunch. So I also depend, how serious somebody else also depends on what time of the day they want to meet you. So to me, breakfast is before work. You could do it early, so it's a non-committal meal, I like to call it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whereas lunch, you have to leave your office physically yeah. and meet that person. And then drinks afterwards, that's a little bit more for like the friend zone of relationship. But <laughs> when we're having coffee, I could say to you, you know, how happy are you with your bank? Uh, and you can tell me I'm very happy, and that's great. Then we could still be friends, and if and when something ever happens, you know, we'll talk about it, but let's, let's be friends at that point, and how can I help you get some more clients? So, and then it's gonna be a two-way street, because if I do help you get clients, you're gonna help me get clients, and eventually you're gonna realize that I'm paying a lot more attention to you than your current banker, and you're gonna bank with me. So it works the same, I think, in every profession, but it's a different focus. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, I. No, no, go ahead. I think that this like return on investment is so hard to pin down when, specifically when you look at networking. Um, you know, it takes a lot of time. It's a very organic process. It takes a lot of and time. And it requires a lot of give and take, right? So you could be giving for a long time, giving referrals to somebody else to, so their business is growing, giving of your time, um, giving connections to others. But then, you know, out of the blue, in a way that I can't even, like, you know, specify a formula to something will materialize so it's just and I think as you do it more you realize which venues are more effective for you you know like where you are making better relationships and seeing uh, results but it does take time I mean you know I, it takes a long time what you're doing is creating top of mind awareness <clears throat> so when someone sees you regularly and you've met and you're repetition. on the newsletter exactly. and that repetition. So when something does change, mm -hmm. because they already like you, the, so the return on investment may not be a direct correlation immediately. But if someone has got you in their sights and they say, I really like you, I wish I could work with you, I don't need any of the services you're offering right now, but something changes mm -hmm. in their scenario. As soon as that happens, you're the first one that comes to mind. And that's when that connection takes place. So unfortunately, we are out of time, which I can't. Who said we needed more time in the beginning? Somebody in the back. <laughs> yes. See, so we need more time. The, the, the great thing is, though, I think there's 15 minutes before everyone has to go downstairs, and you're in a networking uh, room. So um, on your way out, somebody grabs somebody, make a connection. I want to thank the panelists for great um, round of applause for them. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. Uh, it was a great conversation. We're glad you were part. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, Rhonda. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.